was thinking about my path into architecture, urban design, and academia. My name is uh, Mitch McEwen, V. Mitch McEwen, and I teach at Princeton. I'm on the faculty there um, for the past couple of years. I started in some ways late in architecture in the sense that um, it wasn't my first course of study. I, I grew up in Washington, D.C. at a time when the city was, I mean, it was the murder capital of the country. And so it was just kind of extreme where, you know, there was either kind of like a lot of precarity or you were an attorney or kind of working on the hill. And so I didn't think about creative, I wasn't raised in creative professions. I was, I was kind of raised in bureaucracy. It was really important for me to study society, I think in order to unpack some of that bureaucracy. So I ended up in architecture later, basically after understanding that my own ambitions in sort of really wanting to do something like painting, I had done, I had done painting and curating for some time, um, that I was more interested in being a part of an environment and shaping an environment rather than just kind of analyzing things or making things in a purely artistic sense. I've, I've always enjoyed studying these kind of esoteric aspects of society that can be very, very dry. And, and tonight I'll be talking about, about power, I think, for that reason. And so in a way, architecture, I was drawn to it because it could kind of grapple with aspects of bureaucracy and power in society and also open up these, these artistic realms. And I was drawn to the theory before I was actually drawn to, to kind of learning how to, how to design. As an educator, in terms of how I teach, maybe my, my perspective or my skill set, in many ways it's still, it's something that I'm figuring out in the sense that I, I don't teach my own path, um, but in terms of how I teach students to be critical, not just sort of critical about the city, but sort of critical about the terms that, that we're in the midst of. One of the things that I like about Princeton is that it doesn't have an urban planning department. So I'm sort of liberated from doing um, anything like urban design, and also to the extent that I'm interested in it, there's no professional boundaries to kind of stop me from, from bleeding beyond urban design. So I've started teaching a class that I, I developed actually at Michigan, University of Michigan, Again, called the zoning of things that basically opens up a kind of a critical way to unpack that weird legal and formal relationship that we just kind of accept as the, the normative way to plan cities as something that's actually open to design. But I tend to not teach urban design directly because um, I'd rather teach architecture or sort of engage in a more critical way in terms of writing with, with the terms of the city and power. As far as what I'm working on now, this year and next year, it's really a kind of pivotal point in my work in the sense that um, the projects that are in process and, and starting are very concerned with um, maybe the prototype. And that's happening in maybe three different ways that I'm excited about. One is at Princeton, Black Box is a research group that I founded at the Embodied Computation Lab. And so kind of working in a, in a lab sense is, is, one, is one important part. And what, what I'm excited about is that that is starting to have impact on the kinds of client work that my practice is doing. The kinds of work that I've been doing with cultural institutions, now uh, an office is engaged with clients who are starting their own cultural institutions and interested in kind of experimental, somewhere between temporary and permanent kind of platforms for cultural institutions and locations outside of New York. And then in New York, um, my work is, is I'm working on a large exhibition project for next year at a museum that will, um, in a way, kind of open up sort of full-scale prototyping uh, possibilities as well in terms of installation at a, at a museum. You know, thinking about some of my other museum projects in terms of the Venice Architecture Biennale 2016, um, the architectural imagination, part of what I was concerned in, in that project in terms of speculating, how to speculate around issues like pollution and air quality, wastewater treatment plants, freight, um, issues that are maybe not typically within the rubric of architectural speculation. And, and one of the things that kind of interests me in looking at that project now is looking at it in relationship to contemporary ambitions like the Green New Deal, looking at it in terms of a mode of, of ecology, mode of a kind of urban ecology. And when I'm talking about the normal as power, I'm talking about that in a critical relationship where, where for me, what's not so productive is to kind of like contrast the normal with the surreal or you know the, the normal with the complex, but really to understand 
what happens when architecture is concerned with events and with ecology in a, in a speculative way. Tonight, I'm going to talk about that um, also in terms of reparations. That project also has a kind of, has a kind of repair that we can consider within a, a rubric, a larger social polemic of reparations and the need for reparations. One of the things that, that we tend to do often I think in the discipline, we, we sort of graft the political framework onto the urban scale, and then the architectural scale is left to kind of float within the realm of the personal, aesthetic, intuitive, other issues. And, and in my work, I tend to find that, you know, tonight I'll be showing work from the scale of urban design to furniture, and of course, kind of architecture and even a kitchen renovation in between. All of those projects kind of have a political registration, whether it's around the norm, whether it's around materiality, whether it's around kind of portability, how we imagine the body, whether it's it's around sort of, you know, again, things like sewer lines and combined sewer overflow. I, I find that, it, at least in, in terms of how I engage the political realm, the, the scale shift is not really the, the differentiator. It's more the question of kind of like, where do you stage a position within within what's changing and what needs to be changed. <laughs>